The football season might be over for Alabama, but we are not going anywhere. We will still have consistent updates for you on the football team, recruiting, coaching, news, rumors, transport, everything else in between, spring football as well. If you are excited that we're still going to be here, then share today's video right now. Help spread the word that we are not going anywhere this offseason. We begin with some fake news uh, around Alabama football. Maybe you saw the tweet. It was since deleted, by the way, that Alabama had tampered with Arizona quarterback Noah Fafita, and that means they don't like Jalen Milrow. Ah, slow down here a little bit. Uh, one of the, I will call them the aggregate accounts, uh, we know there are many of those and they are frustrating that sometimes they just get information wrong, tweeted this out, citing a report from The Athletic uh, that Alabama and Kalen DeBoer were among the, the programs that w reached out uh, to the Arizona quarterback Noah, Noah Fafita, who's going to be one of the top guys in next year's college football you know, across the board. Saying that, oh, Bama could get in trouble for tampering. It means they don't believe in Jalen Milrow. Not really. Uh, Antonio Morales, who wrote the article for the Athletics, said this is not what was reported. And then uh, Noah's dad, Les, tweeted out this absolute fake, blatant lies. The world we live in. Never have I spoken to Coach DeBoer in from his camp. Crazy. These dudes, meaning the athletic uh, reporter, hound you and then uh, to talk and then spit out uh, shit for likes and views. I had this talk with my high school about doing things for the right reasons and not just likes. Maybe it's not the kids, maybe it's the adults. Now, later was clarified uh, by Les that uh, actually he might have misspoken. It was, frankly, that this came down to, as we, we will get into here, poor wording on the reporting. And that's what led to the issues here. Background again, we'll kind of keep things going back and forth here. Jedfish left Arizona for Washington because Kalen DeBoer went to Alabama. Washington hires Arizona's head coach. Fafita had then contemplated entering the transfer portal. He had thought about it, considered jumping uh, and leaving and potentially going to Washington because that's where his coach is. That, that wasn't even tampering with the thought process there. The Athletic writes this. Thanks to some family in the coaching community, Les had relationships uh, with college staffs across the country. Even though Noah never entered the transfer portal, programs reached out through back channels with a quote from Les that said, we had three for sure. Alabama is the only one we were really interested in in outside of Arizona and staying in obviously Washington. The boys were like, I don't know if we go to Washington. So when you see the quote itself, it, you can very easily understand how it turned into Alabama reached out because the first sentence is programs reached out and then it's Alabama's mentioned. So it's a very logical transition there. What re really happened there was if he entered the portal, Bama would have been one of Fafita's top, top spots because it's Alabama. It wasn't the top school that reached out was in, in the consideration. Very confusing how that went down. Frankly, the athletic reporter needed to just have a clarity line. Three schools reached out, period. Fafita didn't label the schools, and then you get to the Alabama-Washington part there. In general, the transfer portal, although good for the players, does have some issues with it. Uh, you continue to have tampering. We'll get into the, uh, the uh, Iowa stuff and Caelan Proctor here uh, in a little bit. It would be nice to fix things. The NCAA has no teeth. Uh, they, they have no ability to stop this from festering, to kind of get things organized because they allowed it to get to the Wild West stage, and now they are paying for it, I would argue, pretty darn clearly. So what is your faith in the NCAA to fix the NIL and transfer portal and not get rid of it? I think it's good for the players, but make it a little bit more easier. I'll use bad grammar on purpose there. Scale for me from 1 to 10 at the pinned comment of today's video. If the ad comes, take advantage, go vote. Speaking of the transfer portal, Iowa self-reporting a level three violation regarding tampering with the eventual transfer of former Bama offensive lineman Caden Proctor uh, because they had to because Caden Proctor said the, the quiet part out loud uh, on his transfer to Iowa saying this, no bridges were burned. That's why it was so easy for me to pick them when I did enter the transfer portal. Uh, because we still have those relationships. Even after I was bad in the SEC and struggling, hit me up and said, we're proud of you. You're going to get through this. 
Can't be texting players that aren't your team there, bud. Uh, look, a, a level three violation is very minor. I would not anticipate a big punishment for this. Very clear, the NCAA is trying to claw back some power here uh, with the way they're treating Tennessee. We'll see how that ends up going or not. Again, the NCAA's rules were a mess from the beginning, and Tennessee's argument seems to be, well, it wasn't in the rule book. Which is a pretty good, pretty good argument, though, by the way. Uh, this tampering isn't that egregious. Um, I think there were some kind of reasons, too, why Proctor wanted to go home. I get it. Uh, probably wouldn't have happened if Saban didn't leave, but that's how it tends to go. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. You can get a $100 first deposit match when you go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. Here's why I love Prize Picks. It's just you against the numbers. You're not battling thousands of players. There's no pros and sharks and sharps, etc. cetera. You can mix and match sports, NFL for a limited time, NBA or NBA college basketball. The reboot policy keeps your picks in play in the event of an injury in the first half. Player comes back, picks are still alive. The flex play, only got to get two out of three right or three out of four right, four to five right, whatever. For the Super Bowl, I am not doing the flex play on this one. I'm getting the freebie from a Holmes, half a passing yard. It's so easy. I will tag team it with Christian McCaffrey more than 80 and a half yards on the ground and Travis Kelsey more than seven catches. Again, folks, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. Let's check in now on the latest involving Ryan Grubb. He was in Tuscaloosa on Saturday for Junior Day and has been linked to the open Seahawks offensive coordinator job with a chance that he jumps back to the West Coast and takes an NFL job he's never had before in his life. The other name most linked to Seattle was Mike Kafka. He has been blocked from interviewing for the Seahawks OC job. Fairly quiet news going on on that front. I think there will be some more interviews overall. Grubb has no ties to Mike McDonald. He has no ties to the NFL. And by the way, given the fact that Chip Kelly wants to be back in, college, in, in, in the NFL, maybe monitor that job. Just throwing that one out there. Uh, this is one to monitor because it would stink to lose your head coach and your OC and then your second OC in like a span of like a month. It's been a wild whirlwind situation for Alabama and their coaching staff. But do you think Ryan Grubb will be Bama's OC for next season? Why for yes and for no, or will it be the shortest uh, OC stint, I, I think, in Bama history? Get those predictions in for me right now. Now, the second, the normal national Senate day is on Wednesday. The expectation is that Quinton Reese, Noah Carter, and Ryan Williams, a change on that front, are going to sign on Wednesday. The initial day for Williams is going to be on, on the 9th. New reporting from On3 says he's going to sign instead on February 5th uh, in the 24-7 sports composite rankings. He continues to rise and jump uh, on that list as they, I guess they just didn't do him uh, properly enough earlier on. It's fine. You'll, you'll take the, the, the higher rankings, uh, all things considered. That If he does sign as expected officially, you'll... You'll feel good about the, the pen to paper stuff there, or facts, or whatever. That's a very good outcome uh, for Alabama. Quinton Reese, a three star linebacker, will also join this class. Eight, uh, 822 overall from Alabama. Good to build out some, some, you know, classes from that perspective and some local guys. And then Noah Carter, who was committed to Washington and then decommitted and flipped to uh, Arizona, or, or to Alabama, excuse me. Uh, Four-star recruit, number 108 overall, the number nine edge. In the end, Alabama only lost two guys for now from the class of 2024. There will be more departures a year, two years. That's how this always tends to go. So when you factor in the two losses, you kind of gained four uh, in the end. The, the two recruits, Reese and Williams, and then you picked up some transfers from Washington as well. Some younger transfers. You obviously lost plenty of transfers there uh, as well. The specific Kalen DeBoer edition, Noah Carter, Jeremy Bernard, Parker Brailsford, Austin Mack. Three guys, plus the defensive player, but three guys on offense that I think the staff has high hopes for. Now, we will have a final 2024 recruiting rundown for you on Wednesday. The full class for Alabama, the updated composite rankings as well. I mean, you saw Ryan Williams jump to number four. That's awesome. 
We'll break that down for you and where Bama sits in the 24-7 sports composite rankings and more recruiting stuff. So make sure you are subscribed. Don't miss that out or don't miss out on that on Wednesday.